little technical difficulties to start the day or nothing we can't overcome. All right, questions. Let's start with uh, Jerry Thompson from Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, Coach, do you think uh, there's some advantage now being upstairs and that outweigh maybe the positives of being down on the field? Or how do you evaluate that experience for you in the last two games? Uh, kind of like riding a bike. Uh, I think there's probably advantages to both. You know, up top, you get to see it a little bit more. You know, uh, environment is sterile, takes the emotion out of it. Uh, you know, down on the field, you get eye to eye contact with the players. You're able to motivate them. There are certainly things that you can see on the field that you can't see up in the booth. So, uh, I think it's been good, and uh, keeps me from uh, getting run over on the sideline too. So that's a that's another bonus advantage. Alvaro Torres, in zoners. Hi, coach. Hello. Were you able Were you able to talk with Dai Thompson after his interception and how to work on those kind of mistakes? And how important was it for you to take advantage of that big lead and give him those snaps? Yeah, not just for Ty, but for a lot of the young guys to get in there and uh, garner some uh, invaluable gain experience. I think you saw a lot of production from Byron and Seven and uh, seeing Troy catch a touchdown in the young tight ends. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he made a good uh, good throw on the one short route. Um, you know, under threw Dante a little bit on the deep one and then just needed to keep going through his progression on the one that he threw the interception. Either throw it ahead of the guy or keep going through his progression. So, uh, so first game experience against a, a, a 1A opponent and a conference opponent. So something he'll learn from and from which he'll improve. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Joe, about a month ago, you said the goal was about a 65% completion percentage. And Anthony last four weeks has gotten better and better each game. And last week or against Colorado, it was 80%. Just where do you feel like that, that improvement has come to, to see such a, a big increase week after week and culminating in a performance like Saturday? Yeah, no, I, you know, even though AB's played a lot of football, uh, has a lot of experience uh, at this level, that's played in a lot of games. It is still technically his first full year as a starter in this offensive system. And, you know, certainly there's a lot of moving parts around him and, you know, three successful components of the pass game, the protection, you know, the route and the throw. And I think as the season has progressed, he's grown more and more comfortable with all those things, including the offense. And, uh, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, nice steady um, improvement. So hopefully that continues, uh, you know, moving forward through these last four regular season games. Eric Scopel. 247 Sports. Coach, just your assessments of the offense as, as a whole there, especially the first string. Every time they were on the field, Anthony led them to points, whether it be touchdowns or field goals. Just I know you mentioned, I think, seven or eight things you try to check off each game. I assume most of those you accomplished on Saturday. Yeah, the um, you know, our, our goals that we that we review on Sunday. Um, didn't win the turnover battle, you know, which were 50% of that. And then we didn't win the fourth quarter. Uh, those are the two things that we, that we didn't accomplish. But um, you know, I, I feel we put a uh, solid game plan together. Uh, the kids did an excellent job during the week in the preparation phase, you know, making sure that they were earning the right to take the field with confidence and, you know, talk to them, you know, every week about uh, playing with, you know, fanatical effort and surgical precision. And, and I thought we came out in, in the run game and the pass game, the protection, you know, all those things uh, clicked and came together. And, you know, we were, we were able to, you know, move the ball and put points on the board. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Um, I guess I'll ask another one. Uh, Coach, just uh, TJ Bass's strides and, and kind of him at left tackle, how that's been a, maybe a good fit after he's playing guard the last couple of weeks and actually last season as well. You talk about TJ, I'm sorry, I didn't catch first part. Yeah, TJ Bass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think he's a natural fit at tackle uh, just because of his athleticism, uh, you know, particularly against the type of uh, pass rushers we see uh, in this conference. Uh, and, and I think George is a good fit inside, you know, big, strong, physical guy. Uh, you know, matched up against the, uh, you know, three techniques and shades. And, you know, um, I think we've talked about before the, the excellent job that Coach Mirabal does throughout uh, the course of the week, cross-training the guys. You know, so during practice, it's not always the same five out there. They're not always in the same position. So when something happens like Alex Forsythe going down in pregame, you know, Ryan Walk slides over to center and, uh, you know, it's not completely uh, foreign to him. So, um yeah, TJ's done a real nice job. George has done a nice job, you know, moving uh, moving inside. And certainly Ryan and, and the other guys, you know, uh, 
you know, filling in. It's, it's been a nice, uh, you know, nice job by those guys, uh, you know, throughout the past few games. Aaron Heisen, Daily Emerald. Coach Byron came out on the first drive and had three big carries. Um, I guess those were unscripted plays. What are some things that he's been doing to like earn that raw responsibility in practice? Yeah, I think, you know, it all comes back to, you know, you know, talent and, and, and preparation and practice. And uh, Coach Mastro has a uh, very keen eye uh, for what the guys do well in uh, the correct situations to put them in the game uh, relative to the plays that we call. And, you know, Byron got his opportunity. You know, it was planned for him to go in on that drive. And, you know, Lyon did a real nice job blocking. And we were able to, you know, create some numbers and some angles in, in the run game. And, you know, he took care of the rest. Zach Neal, Duxwire. Coach, we've seen what he's done on the field, but I'm curious if you've seen a, a change in the demeanor of Anthony over the past few weeks that he's now had continued success in the offense. Have I seen a change in his demeanor? Is that what you said? Correct. Um, to be <laughs> to be honest, that's one of the things I like best about Anthony, that you don't see much of a change in his demeanor. And sometimes it, uh, we talk about it being a little too even keeled, that you, know, you don't want him to be a quarterback position to be uh, out of control with his emotions, but you don't don't want him to be void of emotion either. So I think the the one aspect that I've seen from Anthony is he doesn't lack confidence, but you can see it growing uh, because of his performance. Um, and I, I think you could ask his teammates that, that guys look to him for, for leadership. So I, I think the biggest thing from an emotional standpoint that we've seen the past three weeks is, uh, you know, continuing to build his confidence. And I think he's exhibited good leadership in, in important moments in big games. James, Capia, the Oregonian. Joe Mario was just saying how Travis is as valuable to you guys is, as any player is to their team in the country. Over the month of October, especially when CJ goes down, he averaged by way of yards from scrimmage over 21 touches and over 136 yards and two touchdowns a game. Those are very Saquon-like numbers, and he is obviously not at all built like Saquon. Can you speak to, is he even exceeding any realm of expectation for a guy who's built the way he is and, and how much it impresses you that a guy who's built the way he is is doing what he's doing for you? Yeah, and, and I think he did a lot, of these, a lot of these things last year, you know, uh, running the ball between the tackles, getting him on the perimeter, and, do, and doing things in the pass game. But – um. He's a, an incredible leader, a great competitor. I mean, those are the two. I mean, the guy loves football and he loves to be put in those kind of situations. But I think the reason we're able to do, you know, some of the things with Travis that, that we did with Saquon, even though the, the the physical stature is different, is because of the versatility, you know, the, the ability to run between the tackles, you know, make people miss when we get them on the edge on, on sweeps or on screens. And then, uh, you know, splitting them out wide and trying to get them matched up on linebackers and safeties and he can get open and he has great hands. So, uh, when, when your tailback is not just a guy that you line up in the backfield and hand the ball off, that he could do a bunch of different things, uh, really forces the defense to to defend every blade of grass on the field. Last question, Jared Denny, Scoop Duck on three. Hey, Joe, I'm just curious with John Johnson out for the first half against Washington, um, if that kind of opens the door for Troy or maybe some of those younger guys to get a few more reps in there. How do you guys kind of plan to go about not having him for those first two quarters? Yeah, that's – that's uh, you know, unfortunate because, you know, Johnny is a, uh, you know, a true leader on the team and the guys, you know, look to him uh, for their cues, vo both vocally and, and by example. But, uh, you know, Johnny is a guy that we cross train and, and does play, you know, both the X and the Z position and can play the slot. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to, you know, make up for those reps between, you know, Chris playing, Chris playing Z, you know, Dante Thornton stepping up, you know, uh, you know, Mike has played some Z and, uh you know, with Troy at the X behind Devin. So th th those young guys, you know, coach has a next man up philosophy that if someone goes down, you know, the person who replaces them is going to do as good or better of a job. And I think our kids believe in that as part of our culture. So unfortunate for Johnny, we're excited to get him back for the second half, but I'm confident that those, uh, those young guys will step in and do an admirable job. Thank you, coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Everybody have a blessed day. All Saints.